Hi everyone. So this week we're moving on from graphing. Um, we're still talking about trig and we're still going to be using a lot of our trig ideas and, and stuff from the unit circle. Um, but now we're going to apply it in a different way with this thing called um, an identity. And so trig identities, um, they're based on the unit circle and they are different ways to write equivalent equivalent trig functions. Um, and so basically what we're doing this week is just like algebraic manipulation um, and, and moving stuff around um, and, and doing um, like kind of math that's, that's um, tricky. Like we're going to be rewriting stuff and making it um, and manipulating it to be a kind of function that we want or a simpler function um, and, and using these trig identities and trig functions that we've actually already defined um, and helpful ways to make things that look kind of scary like this stuff and actually make them a lot simpler. Um, and so there are a few basic identities that we've already talked about. Um, actually, I think I need more room than what I gave myself. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to draw us a familiar picture, hopefully. So I'm going to sketch a little baby unit circle. Um, and I'm just going to draw a triangle in the first quadrant. You know, and so this triangle, so theta lives in here, that's your angle. Um, this is your x distance, this is your y distance, and then this is a unit circle. So that means your radius is 1, so that means the... The hypotenuse is triangle is one, so right triangle. Um, and so for our trig stuff, you know, this is where everything's been coming from. And so um, this helps us lead to some some identities, some definitions, basically, of our trig functions that we can use. We've been using them the whole time. And so quickly, I'm just going to go over sine and cosine. So this is a point x comma y. And we kind of take for granted right now that the x coordinate represents cosine, the y coordinate represents sine. Um... So I'm going to talk about why that happens again real quick. So um, first of all, let's talk about sine, sine theta, um, in terms of a triangle. So if this is theta, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. So, you know, so Katoa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we're looking at the unit circle. The opposite is y, and the hypotenuse is 1. Okay, well, y over 1 is just y, and we know that the y-coordinate is sine. So on, in terms of the unit circle, sine theta just ends up equaling itself, sine theta. So it doesn't seem that interesting, but I think you guys will see why here in a second, why I'm showing you that um, if you look at the unit circle, how do we get sine? The, the y-coordinate is sine, but it really it comes back to, you know, opposite of hypotenuse, y over 1 is just y. So that's why the coordinate um, of any point on the unit circle, it's cosine comma sine. And so cosine is going to be similar. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is x. Hypotenuse is 1. So x up by 1 is just x. And the x-coordinate is just cosine. Um, so there's no tricky stuff with sine and cosine. Sine just is itself. Cosine equals itself. There's no way to rewrite sine and cosine. If you're using the unit circle, Like you can get back and forth. Um, and we can use our SOHCAHTOA ideas um, and then using the unit circle distances to get back to like, yes, the coordinate is cosine comma sine, x, y. So this is, I'm just showing you guys like, y is sine y, y is cosine x. Well, here you go. Um, and really, believe it or not, this is kind of using this identity technique that we're going to be talking about today. Um, the first interesting one, and I'm going to start writing it down here, is, is tangent. So tangent theta. So, Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so if we go to our unit circle, the opposite side is y, the adjacent side is x. So we have y over x. But now we can take it one step further. We know y and x. y is sine, x is cosine. So tangent is really sine, because y is, so it's really sine theta over cosine theta. And so what's going to happen is, is when we have more complicated trig functions that we're trying to simplify, any time that we see sine theta over cosine theta, we can replace it with tangent, and that's going to make it simpler. 
Um, and so then the rest of the stuff that we're going to talk about in terms of basic identities is, um, so sine, cosine, and tangent all kind of go together. And then there's these things called the reciprocal, reciprocal trig functions. And you guys know those as secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So um, the first one we'll talk about is cosecant. So cosecant, cosecant theta. Remember, that's sines, buddy. So cosecant is sines, buddy. Um, and cosecant is sine flipped. Cosecant is sine flipped. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is y over 1. So that means cosecant is the flipped of y over 1. So that means cosecant is 1 over y. And we know y is sine. So cosecant is 1 over sine theta. So anytime we see 1 over sine theta, we can rewrite that as cosecant and vice versa. So we'll be able to replace cosecant with 1 over sine theta and vice versa. Next up is secant theta. That's cosine's friend. Cosine's buddy. Um, and so secant is cosine flipped. And so that means secant theta would be, well, let's see. Cosine is x over 1. So that means secant would be 1 over x. And we know x is really cosine. So secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. So anytime we see 1 over cosine theta or secant, we can replace them with each other. And then lastly, the last reciprocal trig function is cotangent theta, which is tangent's friend. Tan's buddy. Tangent's buddy. So that means we're going to, that's tangent flipped. Tangent flipped. Well, tangent, we did over here, right? Tangent is opposite of our adjacent, which is y over x. And so cotangent is, we're going to flip our fraction. So cotangent is x over y. Cotangent theta is x over y, which means cotangent theta is x is cosine, y is sine. So cotangent is cosine theta over sine theta, which makes sense too because, you know, it's flipped, right? So tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So these are the basic identities. Um, using the unit circle, we can rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. So that's what we're doing is we can take any of our trig functions and rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine. So up here, these are kind of like our key. This is kind of like our identity key up here. Um, sine and cosine are the key to the unit circle and we can rewrite every other trig function we know in terms of sine and cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine, cosecant is one over sine, secant one over cosine, cotangent cosine over sine. So the way that triangles work, they allow us to, uh, to manipulate it such that we can write everything in terms of its x distance and y distance which is actually really cool and really helpful. Um, and so all we're gonna practice this week, you guys, is, is taking trig functions that look kind of scary and turning it into simpler things in terms of sine and cosine. That's the goal. Um, and then, you know, really we're just trying to get it down to the most basic, like one chunk instead of a bunch of pieces. So the first one, <clears throat> the first one up we have sine x times secant x. Okay. So the first thing I like to do, you guys, is just label anything that you can change. Okay, sine. Can we replace sine with anything? No, sine just equals itself. So if you go up to your key, sine and cosine, you can't replace them with anything because they're already sine and cosine. So sine can't be replaced. So I, so you can't replace. Um, you'll start to see that I usually just call that a nope one. Like sine is a nope. Like nope, we can't do anything. We can't make it. We can't make sine any easier. So we just leave it. But C can't. What can we replace secant with? All right, secant is one over cosine. Sweet. So secant is one over cosine x. Great. So then let's, uh, and then if they're pushed together like this, if they're just squished next to each other, that means they're multiplying. These are multiplying together, Mul multiplied together. They're being squished, they're squished. So if they're squished, that means they're being multiplied. So that means now instead of writing sine x times secant x, I'm going to replace secant with 1 over cosine. So now I've got sine x times 1 over cosine x. Okay, um, so I've got sine times a fraction. So let's rewrite sine as a fraction. Everything can be written over 1. So And then to multiply fractions, you just multiply across. So multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. Sine times 1 is just sine. 
over 1 times cosine is cosine. And then we get sine over cosine. Well, if you look up here, you know, sine, theta, doesn't matter what variable you use, by the way. It could be theta, x's. Your homework uses, like, t, theta, x, m, and, you know, whatever letter. Um, so the structure of sine over cosine is tangent. And here we have a sine over cosine. So that means our original thing that we started with is actually just tangent. So the reason why identities are helpful is because this looks scary. Like, if I had to graph this, like, I don't know what sine times secant looks like as a graph. Um, but tangent, like, tangent is something that's easy to graph. We can plug in to tangent and get values and just graph tangent. So the, the point of learning how to do this manipulation is so that you can take algebraic functions that look scary and turn them into something simple that you can identify things about. All right, so up next. Um, now I've got sine times cotangent. Well, sine is a nope. You can't replace sine with anything or cosine. But cotangent, you know, look up here. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'll replace cotangent with cosine over sine. Cosine, oh, it's x, not theta. Cosine over sine. So I'll rewrite it now, and I've just got sine chilling still. I've got sine x times cosine x over sine x. And again, I'm going to put sine over 1, and then, you know, fractions, you just multiply across. So sine times cosine is just sine cosine. So we get sine x cosine x, and the bottom is 1 times sine x is sine x. And then um, if you notice, just like um, just like in algebra, let me find a scratch piece here. For example, so this is a side note, um, if I have x cubed over x, I can cancel things out. That's the same thing as having x times x times x over an x, and we can cancel them out. Well, um, so that would leave x squared behind. Um, or any letter, right? Any function. So you guys are good at simplifying when you have something on top and bottom. You can cancel this out. This becomes x squared. Or if you have like x to the fifth over x squared, that's x times x times x times x times x. Five x's over two x's being multiplied together. You cancel out and you're left with three on top. So that's x cubed. We can do the same exact thing with trig functions. So there's a sine on top and bottom, or even like, it's even like the same thing as having like two X over two. You can cancel the twos, right? The twos cancel and you just get X. Um, if we have a sine over a sine, the sines cancel. So all that's left is cosine X. So the scary looking sine times cotangent actually simplifies down to just a cosine function. Woo. All right. So the next step, now we're going to practice dividing. So these two are multiplying together because they were squished. This is obviously dividing because there's a, a fraction bar there. Um, so I'm going to see what can I replace cosecant with. Um, so cosecant is 1 over sine. So I'm going to replace cosecant with 1 over sine x. And secant is 1 over cosine x. So if I rewrite it, I have 1 over sine x all over... 1 over cosine x. Okay, well, remember when you divide fractions, this, I'm gonna, these are my identities up here. When you divide fractions, divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal, or this is where I do keep it, change it, flip it. So keep the first fraction the same, change this to multiplication. So I've got one over sine x, change to multiplication and flip the second one. So now it becomes cosine x over one. And then multiplying fractions, you multiply across. One times cosine is cosine x, sine times one is sine. All right, and so we've simplified. And then we look up here, is there anything that's cosine over sine? Yep, cotangent. Cotangent is cosine over sine, so that means this is just cotangent x. So we can take something scary, cosecant over secant, simplify it down to just cotangent x. So we're going to do something similar with this one. Cotangent, what can we replace cotangent with? So go back up here, cotangent is cosine over sine. Cosine x over sine x. Cosecant is 1 over sine. 
So then um, we rewrite it. So cotangent is cosine x over sine x. Divide. Cosecant is 1 over sine x. So once again, you're dividing fractions, so you keep it, change it, flip it. So the first one stays the same. Cosine x over sine x. Change to multiplication. Flip the second one. So flip 1 over sine x to be sine x over 1. Um, and then I just want to make sure I'm double checking my answers because I'm like, did you? Because you can't. Yep. All right. So then we get in the same case because I just I, I didn't realize that these two things were basically the same problem. <laughs> um, you multiply together. So cosine times sine is cosine x sine x over sine times one is sine x. Once again, you have a sine on top and bottom, so you cancel them out, and we just get a cosine x. Woo. All right, and then the last one. Now there's three pieces to check. Sine, that's a nope, you can't replace it with anything. Cosecant is one over sine. And then cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'm going to rewrite it with everything replaced. Um, so what we get is um, I'm going to, you know, when you're multiplying, I'm going to pull this sine out front because we're not replacing the sine. So I'm going to write it like sine x times, and then this is going to be a big fraction because we're going to have a fraction divided by a fraction. Um, so I'm just going to leave the sine kind of chilling out front because the sine's not really doing anything. So, uh, like, we're not changing it. So I'm going to write the sine out front times cosecant is 1 over sine x divided by cotangent, which is cosine x over sine x. So the sine doesn't need any simplifying, but this is a keep it, change it, flip it situation. So we've got sine x, I'm just going to bring it down, times, you know, keep the first one, 1 over sine x, change to multiplication, flip it. So then um, I'm just going to multiply the fractions across. So we've got sine x times 1 times sine x is sine x over sine times cosine is just sine x cosine x. And so then here we have that situation where you know I have a sine over a sine, so those cancel. So I've got, I'm going to come up here and continue, I've got sine x times, if there's nothing left on top, that's not zero, right? The sine's canceled. What's left on top is 1 over cosine x. And so then your last step, put sine over 1, and you can multiply these together. So multiply across, sine times 1 is sine x over 1 times cosine is cosine x. And we know that sine over cosine is tangent. So we get tangent x. Ooh. So this one's a little bit more work because, you know, there's, there's that extra chunk in there. We had to keep it, change it, flip it, and then multiply that sine back in. All right, so um, this is our first set of practice with just the basic trig identities um, that are based on the unit circle that we, we already know this stuff. Um, we're just applying it in a new way, but we know that, you know, tangent is opposite over adjacent, which would be sine over cosine. Um, we've seen the reciprocal trig functions before. Cosecant, secant, cotangent is reciprocal of sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, but now we're just kind of just doing some fun simplifying stuff to get things to be easier. At least I think it's fun. All right, so next up, I'm going to introduce you to the last kind of identity that I'm going to teach you this year. So we're learning everything today, um, which is the Pythagorean identity. And I've got a unit circle actually drawn this time. So I'm going to label it. My printer doesn't work too well. So this is a unit circle. Unit circle. Um, and so here's my coordinate x, y, this is my x distance, this is my y distance, and then because it's a unit circle, the hypotenuse is 1. Um, so using the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, hopefully you guys know, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to show that this triangle is true. You know, this is a right triangle. All the triangles that we make along the unit circle are right triangles, and so um, the Pythagorean theorem works for any spot. We've actually, you guys know, we've had to do Pythagorean theorem for some of our problems, um, but it works generally as well. So, you know, real quick, remember, x is cosine, y is sine, so just keep that in mind. Um, so I'm just going to label them a, b, and c, so let me switch colors. I'll make, you know, I'll make this a, b, and c. So let's just label it, you know, for Pythagorean theorem purposes. So I'll replace a squared with y squared, plus b squared would be x squared, equals, and then c would be 1 squared. Our last step what we can do is we can replace x and y with sine and cosine. So y is sine, so we get sine squared. Um, and just so you know, they put this squared, uh, let me show you real quick. So they put this squared for sine, usually with the sine, and then they'll write x. So it's not typical to see sine x squared because it's misleading because this looks like you're doing sine of x squared, but not really, right? You want sine of x squared, but this is messier notation. So they usually put the squared with the sine just to communicate. You're squaring the sine, you're not squaring the x. So sine squared theta. So you can use theta, you can use x. You know, I could say sine squared theta. Remember theta is just a, no, you can't see. Remember theta is just a variable. So don't get thrown off by theta. Sine squared theta plus, and x is cosine, plus cosine squared theta equals one squared is one. And so this is what's called the Pythagorean identity because um, <coughs> we're just applying this the Pythagorean theorem to any triangle that would live in your unit circle. Um, Pythagorean theorem is your legs squared equals the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse everywhere in your unit circle is one. So um, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And so this is really helpful in um, other trig applications. So we can always replace one with sine squared plus cosine squared. So these are, you know, vice versa. We can also just solve for sine squared. So for example, sine squared would equal to get sine squared by itself, you'd subtract cosine squared from both sides. So sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. Oh, theta is theta. And then similarly, if you wanted cosine squared by itself, you'd subtract sine squared from both sides. So cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. So if you ever see a sine squared or a cosine squared, or you know these pieces, vice versa, you can replace this with that, this with that, you know, these are interchangeable, they equal each other, so whenever you see that in something, like down here, you can replace it with this stuff. So these are your last three identities, um, and these two are obviously just rewriting the Pythagorean identity, um, but it's helpful because sometimes you end up with just a sine squared or just a cosine squared, and you can replace it with stuff. All right, so let's try simplifying some of these. So first up, um, cosine squared, that's a nope, we can't replace cosine squared. Tangent, so let me grab my other sheet. Tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm gonna replace tangent with sine, cosine, and then sine is a nope. And so these are being multiplied because they're squished. So I've got cosine x plus sine over cosine times sine. And remember, I'm going to write sine because this is a fraction now. I'm going to write sine over 1. So I'm going to simplify the fractions because, you know, order of operations says to multiply first. So I'm going to multiply across. I've got cosine x plus sine times sine. So um, just like before, so if I have x times x, that gives us x squared. Um, if I have 4 times 4, that's really 4 squared, right, which would be 16. So if we have sine times sine, that's going to be sine squared. So sine times sine is sine squared x over cosine x times 1 is just cosine x. So the problem now is we're trying to simplify. So that means we're trying to get all the pieces to come together. The problem now is we're adding. And not only are we adding, but we're adding fractions. We're adding fractions. This is a fraction, so we can make this a fraction. Cosine is cosine over 1. So we're adding fractions, which means we need common denominators. 
So to get common denominators, you just check all the pieces and see what's in the bottom. This one has a cosine, this one has a one. Um, so like I said, you know, this one's this side's missing a cosine, this side's missing one, but one doesn't do anything right. Like if I multiply by one over here. So all I have to do is multiply this side by a cosine on top and bottom. To get common denominators. So now the top here, cosine times cosine, would be cosine squared x over cosine times one is cosine. Plus, and then this one we didn't have to change anything. Sine squared x over cosine x. Now we have common denominators. So I can write this as one fraction, because the bottom's the same. So the top is cosine squared plus sine squared. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x all over the common denominator, which is cosine x. But hopefully this looks familiar, right? If you look up here, cosine squared plus sine squared, and it doesn't matter what order it's in, sine squared plus cosine squared always equals one. So right here I can replace cosine squared plus sine squared is really just one over cosine. And then your last step, one over cosine, one over cosine is secant. So this equals secant x. Ta-da! Um, it looks like it's kind of a lot of work, um, but I'm making sure that I'm showing every single step. Um, so all we're doing um, is just really manipulating algebra. Woo. So let's try another one. Cotangent plus tangent. Well, we can replace cotangent with cosine over sine. We can replace tangent with sine over cosine. And we're adding them together. And so hopefully you guys will pick up on this. Whenever you have fractions that are being added, you're gonna need common denominators. So we've got cosine x over sine x plus sine x over cosine x. All right, we're adding, do they have common denominators? No, this side's a sine, this side's a cosine. So that means this side needs a cosine and this side needs a sine. So that way they both will have sine and cosine in the bottom. So and then we simplify, we multiply across for the two chunks. So multiply across, cosine times cosine is cosine squared x over cosine times sine is just cosine sine. Plus sine times sine is sine squared x over cosine times sine is cosine sine. Sweet. So then we can write, write it as, you know, they have a common denominator now. Both their denominators is cosine sine. So we can write it as one fraction. The top is cosine squared x plus sine squared x over the common denominator is cosine sine, cosine x sine x. And then again, this is your Pythagorean identity. You have cosine squared plus sine squared. So whenever you have cosine squared plus sine squared or sine, you know, either way it can be flipped, um, equals one. So we can replace the denominator, sorry, the numerator here with one over cosine x sine x. So now we're at something that doesn't look familiar. We have one over cosine x sine x. Um, but hopefully we recognize that, you know, one over sine and one over cosine have reciprocal trig functions. One over sine is cosecant, one over cosine is secant. So um, really this is the same thing as just having one over cosine times one over sine. They've just been squished together. 1 over cosine is secant x times 1 over sine is cosecant x. Ta da! Or you, you can also just write them squished together. You don't need to put the dot. Secant x, cosecant x. Woo! All right, and then the last one. Um, I'm giving this one like with weirdly specific instructions because some of your homework problems are like this. Um, I couldn't find homework problems that didn't give it in like just give us one part of it. So the goal for your homework questions is just simplify it like you would normally, um, but it says like give it as something times sine of x. So like at some point you're gonna get something times sine, sine x and just tell us what that something is. So let's first start off though, secant, we can replace with one over cosine x. Cosine's a nope, we can't replace cosine because it's itself. So we've got one over cosine x, minus cosine x. So once again, we have fractions. We're gonna need common denominators, turn cosine into a fraction. It's just cosine over one. 
This side's missing a one, but it doesn't matter. This side's missing a cosine. So we have one over cosine x minus, you know, multiply across. Just leave the negative in the middle. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared x over one times cosine is cosine. So now we have the bottoms are the same, so we can regret it as one fraction with the denominator of cosine. So the top is one minus cosine squared. One minus cosine squared x. So hopefully this one looks familiar. One minus cosine squared x. Well, one minus cosine squared equals sine squared. Woo. So I can replace one minus cosine squared with sine squared x over cosine x. Okay, well at this point, um, we can't replace anything. Um, so, and we want something times sine. Um, and so we want some function times sine. Well, looking at it, we have sine squared over cosine. So the tricky thing that we can do here is um, sine squared, well, let's start as x squared. If we had x squared, we could rewrite that. That's the same thing as x times x. And so if we have sine squared x, that's the same thing as sine x times sine x. And we need some function times sine x. So we're gonna, we're gonna split it up. This is the same thing as sine x times sine x over cosine x. Well, you can pull one of those signs out and just write it, you know, on the outside. So we can just say sine x over cosine x times sine x. Um, and so then our last step is, well, we know sine over cosine is a special function. Sine over cosine is tangent. So our final answer is tangent x times sine x. And so in WAMAP, they want to know just what's that part out front. So your answer would be tangent. All right, guys, hopefully um, identities go well. I highly suggest doing the homework problems for these. They're very, very similar to my notes ones. I went through the notes and then made the or made the notes problems. Sorry, I went through the homework. I went through the homework and made the notes problems by looking at the homework. Um, your quiz will be very similar. Um, your level two questions are going to be like the first page of the notes, the simpler identities. Your level three questions are going to be like this kind, you know, the more complicated common denominator stuff. Um, so try the homework. Let me know if you guys have any questions, um, and I hope this goes well.